Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and in today's video we're going to be talking about the Orlando Magic. They decided to sign two players to extensions yesterday which gives us an indication of where they think this roster is going uh, and in this video I'm going to be giving my opinions on where I think it's going and where it should be going in certain points in the video as well. But really quickly before we get started, if you enjoy content like this then consider subscribing. I upload twice a day every day so there's a great place for consistent NBA content. You can also leave a like rating on the video as well. Helps me out a ton. Let's me know that you're enjoying the content. It helps get the videos out to more people on YouTube as well. And you can also hang out with me at various socials at the bottom of the screen that are in a link tree down in the description below. With those things said, let's talk about the Orlando Magic. So I made a video about them not long ago talking about the situation this roster was in and how to quote unquote fix the Orlando Magic. And uh, one of the points that I made was that they really needed to evaluate the young talent on their roster because they have guys that are now considered NBA veterans that are probably you know near the top of the hierarchy of this team. Guys like Aaron Gordon, guys like Nikola Vucevic, you know what you're getting out of those players. But they didn't know what they'd be getting out of guys like Marco Fultz, Jumi Okiki, uh, Cole Anthony, and Jonathan Isaac. And I made the point that ideally this season would be used as kind of an evaluation process where you go into the season and you play your young guys more than maybe you would have expected to. Uh, we'll throw Mo Bamba into this category as well. And you kind of see what you have and you figure out what guys are worth keeping and aren't. And obviously that was going to be an issue with Jonathan Isaac because he's not going to play the season. But for the other guys that I mentioned, that was really the goal. Um, the Magic, on the other hand, decided to go ahead and sign uh, Markel Fultz and Jonathan Isaac two new extensions before the extension deadline yesterday. Uh, and these are some significant, significant numbers for these players. For Fultz, it's three years, $50 million. In that previous video, I talked about being comfortable with like a three year 35, maybe up to three years 40 for Markel Fultz. So that's significantly higher than what I mentioned there. And then Jonathan Isaac, four years, $80 million. So they just added uh, $30 million plus to their payroll for the next couple of years between these two players. And that is not an insignificant number for this team because they were already going into next year planning on having $89 million in payroll without the Isaac and Fultz extensions. And with those added in, they have one of the highest payrolls in the league for next season, at least projected to have one of the highest payrolls in the league for next season. So in terms of the individual decisions, I don't really have an issue with the Jonathan Isaac one. Um, Four, I mean, four years, 80 is one of those where if a couple of years from now, he's an all NBA defender, he's improved on the offensive end and he's a borderline all-star forward, then you're cool with that. Uh, and if it doesn't work out that way and he continues to struggle with injuries, yeah, 20 million a year is a lot for someone like Jonathan Isaac in that scenario. And there's been a significant injury issues, not just the, the knee injury that he suffered in the bubble, but prior to that, he's always been kind of in and out of the lineup. Uh, but at a certain point when you're the Orlando Magic, like you can't let someone like Jonathan Isaac leave. Uh, and trading him is going to be difficult as well coming off an injury. So you sign in the extension and you hope that it works out. The one that I have an issue here is with Markel Fultz. Um, in my opinion, yeah, he's looked fine, uh, but he hasn't done enough to warrant a three or $50 million contract. In my opinion, specifically for a Magic team that has started to invest a little bit more in the backcourt, drafting someone like Cole Anthony. Um, and just... Uh, <laughs> I'm not positive that Markel Fultz is a guy that I want to kind of build around here moving forward. Maybe he has a great year this year and this turns out to be a bargain extension because whatever he would have signed at the end of the year would have been significantly higher. And, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of different, you know, extensions that were signed yesterday, including some that weren't signed in a video later today and how that kind of impacts the climate of this 2021 free agency class. And maybe the more you look at it and the less and less options there are out there for 2021 free agency, Maybe you're the Magic and you look at it and think, you know, Fultz, if he has a decent year this year, he's going to get a significant offer in 2021 free agency because of the limited, uh, you know, players out there that people are excited about. And they want to go ahead and kind of get ahead of that, go ahead and sign him rather than having to match someone else's restricted free agency offer. And I get that. But as you look at their roster as a whole, they have got to start moving some of these pieces. They can't pay $140 million uh, to be the eighth or ninth seed in the Eastern Conference. Unless they see higher upside on this roster than I do, significantly higher upside, there are trades coming for this Magic roster. Whether that's Aaron Gordon, whether that's Nikola Vucevic, uh, you know, whether it's dumping the Alfa Camino contract, whatever the case may be, they have to make some moves. There's just simply, there, there, there's no scenario in my mind where, you know, this young talent develops and they're suddenly like a top four seed in the Eastern Conference because that's what they're paying for right now uh, is a team that should be top four in the East. And that's just simply not the roster that they have. So the fact that they were so willing to commit to these two players at this point in the process tells me that they're 
they're going to try and make some things happen with this roster, get some expiring contracts, dump some salary, be a little bit more flexible moving forward and go from there. Because if this is their if this is their plan to keep this roster, to keep running it back with this group, um, these are these are mistakes as contracts, plain and simple. Uh, they, they just they can't justify paying the money that they're going to be paying uh, for a team that just isn't going to be successful. And for me, it kind of seems like the odd the odd guys out here are going to be either Nikola Vucevic or Aaron Gordon. Uh, they both have decreasing salaries over the next couple of seasons. But if you're investing in Jonathan Isaac at this level, four years, 80 million, uh, you know, either your four or your five spot is taken up. I know that Isaac can play the three or Gordon can play the three or Vucevic can do whatever. But for me, I'm not trying to have you know, Isaac is the three, Gordon is the four, and Vucevic is the five. I don't think that's going to be a good enough offensive team to get anything done. Or you can flip Isaac and Gordon and play one of them at the three or the four, whatever. Uh, there's one too many guys that are making too much money. So one of those two players I would imagine is going to be moved. I wouldn't be shocked if Terrence Ross gets moved at some point, whether it be this year or otherwise. Uh, the Aminu contract is still there as well. They, they've got to make some decisions, and that's without even accounting for, okay, maybe we want to keep Aaron Gordon but move Vucevic. We've got to sign Gordon to a new deal in 2022. Uh, we have to sign Mo Bamba to a new deal if we want to keep him and extend him. And it, it's just, it's a weird situation because I don't necessarily have a huge issue with the extensions themselves uh, other than the Fultz one being an overpay for me personally right now but i can understand the rationale it's just how the roster is constructed as a whole and and generally just a lack of a plan here again unless it involves moving uh gordon or Vucevic. the problem with moving one of those two players is i'm not convinced there's a ton of value out there for them um i would think just because of his age gordon would have more value right now than Vucevic, even though Vucevic is you know a former all-star center uh, I'm now that 30 years old, given the contract that he's on, I'm not sure teams are going to be incredibly excited about bringing in someone that doesn't raise their ceiling defensively. Uh, is a really good offensive player, but uh, I'm not sure that like a contending team that's looking more for players that are going to fit in rather than take up a huge offensive role is going to be super excited about Vucevic. So I think the guy here that has more value is probably Aaron Gordon. Uh, then you open up that four spot for Jonathan Isaac. You get some value back for Gordon, whether that be draft picks or salary cap space or whatever. Uh, and then you've got, you know, Fultz, Cole Anthony, Evan Fournier, uh, Terrence Ross, Jonathan Isaac, Nikola Vucevic, and the Gordon thing feels a little bit redundant the more you look at the roster and you say, okay, we'll go get value out of him, we'll decrease our payroll a little bit, uh, get some future assets and figure it out. Uh, but again, the continuing problem for me here for Orlando is just a considerable lack of upside. They just don't have... Um, guys on this roster that i think are going to end up being all-stars like i mean jonathan isaac has the highest upside on the roster in my opinion but he's coming off of a knee injury and has had injury issues throughout his career so you don't know if he's ever going to realize that potential and i know that people really love markel fultz and they think that he has a bright future but i think a lot of that is just tied to the fact that he's a former number one overall pick and maybe it's not actually uh, the reality of the situation which is that he's an okay NBA guard that is, yes, still young and developing, but given you know the history of issues he's had in the NBA, I'm not counting on a huge Markel Fultz here at any point over the next couple of seasons. So the bottom line here is, with these contracts, unless there are roster moves made, the Orlando Magic have committed to being a mediocre team, to being an eight or a nine seed and struggling to compete for that year after year. Uh, when Jonathan Isaac gets healthy, maybe they can push for the sixth seed if they keep this roster together. But at that point, uh, that's a lot of money to be paying for just a sixth seed. And there's, there need to be moves made. They need to come up with a plan. They need to figure out if they're going to be a young team, if they're going to be an old team, are they going to be an expensive team? Are they going to be a cheap and flexible team? And these new contracts that they've now added to their roster are going to have a huge you know, thing to do with where they go moving forward, what choices they make with this roster, and ultimately who they end up moving, either Nikola Vucevic or Aaron Gordon. I would be shocked if a year and a half from now, a year from now, uh, both Vucevic and Gordon are still on the roster. Um, I just, I feel like it's pretty clear now that uh, that's where this team is going, is looking at moving one of those guys they've committed to other players on the roster. And it's probably going to be Gordon if I had to guess. So maybe keep an eye on him, on him as a potential NBA trade machine guy or potential trade target this season prior to the trade deadline. No, but that's just kind of where I'm at right now in Orlando. And yeah, there you have it. That is going to be the end of today's video. And I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on the screen. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day, and I will see you all next time.